bless you. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name is Ron, and today we are gonna be reuniting baby with mother, with grandmother. All right, so all of these plants came from the original grandmother Syngonium Albo that kicked off my YouTube channel. So I've had this plant for about, God, I have to check. When did I post my first YouTube channel? January 23, 2021. So about a little over a year and a half ago is when I posted my first YouTube channel. But I've had this plant even before that. So at least two years, I've had this mother plant. It grows so fast under my care, but it wasn't until I brought all of my plants here into this plant room that this plant exploded in growth. So I took a lot of cuttings, gave some cuttings away to some friends. About six months ago, when I got my Millsbow cabinet, I put this one in the cabinet, but I took this cutting from the mother plant I want to say about a year ago, something like that. I don't even know. It was a long time ago. But at the time I put it into the Millsbow cabinet, it only had about like three or four leaves. So in the six months that it's been in there, it pushed out all of this growth. Seven weeks ago, I took a cutting, a top cutting and several mid cuttings from this one. And this is the result. So let me just show you the root growth seven weeks at the wind oh my gosh it's so windy outside anyway because we're talking about mothers mother nature hurt me so this is seven weeks of root growth and i haven't switched the water out at all i just kept refilling this glass with water every time it got too low so i'm not a really good plant dad in that department but i mean look it's grown very nice roots. They're all white and fleshy. The leaf growth on here is beautiful. So I keep this one right next to my humidifier right here, which is under this really bright grow light, which is probably going to turn off pretty soon. We'll see because <laughs> it's set on a timer. But yeah, seven weeks is more than enough time for this to be reunited with the mother plant. You want at least three to four inches of roots from your cuttings that should be able to sustain, you know, all the leaves on here. Even better if you see like secondary feeder roots, which there are some here, not a whole lot, but that's kind of like an extra level of security for you and comfort in knowing that it'll transplant very well from water to soil. So yeah, the plan today is to reunite baby with baby mama with grandmama, because look, you can't really see it, but there is, I would say 15 feet of vine just growing very wildly on the carpet there. This plant has been up here on the shelf. I don't know if you can hear that stupid ass dog outside, but that's the neighbor's dog and it barks like crazy and it drives me nuts sometimes. We're not going to let that phase me. Okay. We have a mission to accomplish. But yeah, this has been up here against my south facing window. Some of the vines were growing upwards along the shelf, but then there was just one particular vine that's about 15 feet long. I kid you not. I just simply let it grow and grow. The main project for this plant is to have it against this wall next to this grow light. I've been wanting to attach the vines to the wall in some kind of pattern. We might not be able to get that part done in this video, but we will see. The really interesting part about that vine is that right at the end of the vine, it started pushing out a lot of variegation. Like, look at that. That leaf is totally white. It's very pretty, right? But it pushed out another totally white leaf like down here in this node and in that, as you would expect. 
browned and crisped up. So I plucked that one off. We can expect the same with this one, sadly, but that's the truth. It's weird because, you know, people say that in order to promote variegation, the plant must be, well, I guess it kind of makes sense because <laughs> I have a grow light down here. So this vine was trailing down and I just kind of like wrapped it up in a circle. In my mind, I was telling myself that it wasn't getting a lot of light because the window is up here, but I do have a grow light down here. So I think when I added that grow light, it started pushing out all of that variegation. All of the other leaves on this vine are very beautifully variegated like that. Look at right there. That's a perfect ratio of green and white. We're going to pot up all of these babies and mothers and grandmothers into one big pot. This, it's technically a self-watering pot is what the product says because it's got holes and then this tray. But I have other plants in the same pot and I wouldn't call it self-watering. I would just call it another way of bottom watering because this tray is not deep enough to hold enough water for the plant to absorb enough because this is a big ass pot. I think this is like eight inches. So it's gonna be upgrading from a four inch pot and from, I think this is a six inch pot, but it's very deep. That's the other thing with this plant. I think it's, I think I can attribute its explosive growth with this deep pot, pot, pot. <laughs> because roots like to grow downwards, right? They don't like to be root bound, like growing down and then growing in a circle at the bottom of the pot and then growing back up because those roots that are growing back up will be subject to underwatering because it's trying to go back up and find more room. And then the, the tips of those roots will dry up before the bottom of these, of the root structure. So if you have a plant and you think it's root bound and it's giving you a lot of yellow leaves, that could be the sign that the plant is declining because the tips of those roots at the top of the soil are dying. So I'm actually very interested to see the roots in this pot. This is a tall six inch pot and it's glazed ceramic all around. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely root bound because there are some roots sticking out from the bottom. Yeah, I hope it's not gonna be too much of a challenge today. Let's go in for the closer look. I already have pre-mixed soil from my last video if you wanna know exactly what goes into that mix, but I'm gonna try to also use the existing soil because I might not have enough soil mix. Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll be in good hands, guys. All right, welcome to the closer look. So the first thing I wanna do is unravel my dirty ass potting mat and then take a look at the roots of this mother. By the way, I just got this new bench from Target today and I'm so in love with my new surface area. It's so much more than my piano bench and I can comfortably sit down crisscross applesauce and repot my plants now. The only thing is that I have to use a potting mat because otherwise this fabric is gonna get super dirty. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a stake in here and a Velcro. The interesting thing about this, the way that this one grew is that when I took the cutting these cuttings actually. It pushed out growth from near the incision point, but also near the base of the pot here. It's already got two leaves and one more on the way, which looks like it's gonna have a good amount of variegation. See, the white tip. And this one is in a concrete planter and it's super cute. I like the way it looks.
Okay, so that was kind of a challenge, but I think the trick was to, I don't know if you guys saw, but I stuck this tiny shovel in the sides and I tried to loosen the root ball from the sides of the pot, which worked, but then I could still feel that it was still stuck on the bottom. So what I did was I stuck the shovel in there, pried it up at the same time as pulling the root ball up just like that and it came right out so i'm going to use the soil again so i'm just going to dump it into my existing mix that i have and then let's just take a look at these roots Ooh, the bottom is so fleshy i love seeing fleshy roots because it's a telltale sign that it is a really healthy root system no more like brown, mushy, black roots. But it is starting to like go around in circles here. It's gonna be super happy going into the bigger pot. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave the root ball just like that. It really doesn't matter, I think, whether you untangle it or not, because all of this is gonna be beneath soil anyway. You just want to make sure that the roots have soil all around. If you have a very compacted root system, that's a different story where there might not be soil even surrounding some of the roots. But since most of the roots here are on the bottom, as you can see, when I put this into the new pot, like if you imagine this is the pot, I'm gonna be putting the roots on some of the soil like that. So it's gonna be surrounded by soil, so it should be okay. But yeah, so this is the root system. Very nice. And you kind of already got a close up of the roots on the cuttings, but let me see if I can separate them and then show you each individual root system. So there is a total of four cuttings in here. So this here is a top cutting. It's got three and a half leaves. The half is that one about to unfurl. There's a little bit of white mold here. I'm just gonna wipe it off. But see, this is why it's very important to do your water changes, guys. But yeah, I mean, otherwise it looks very healthy. The roots are still very nice and white. These other three mid cuttings, they all have a good amount of roots. This one has the most roots of them all. And this is what the leaf looks like. It's almost all green. It's probably the most greenest one, hence the amount of roots but as you can see here there is a new spike so a new leaf is coming out of that here's the next mid cutting that's the leaf not a lot of roots there is this mushy one mushy two <laughs> it did push out roots from these two aerial roots nodes and then finally this last mid cutting with a beautiful leaf it's like pure white and a super marbled splashy green and white and light green pattern this one does not have mushy roots thank goodness but it does have at least what is that like five inches of roots okay so let's put that to the side and then let's look at the big mama, excuse me, the big grandmama root system. But let me put away the soil so we have a new, clean, fresh slate. Ooh, we've got some didio stains. Okay, so first and foremost, I don't have a strategy in how to actually depot this plant, but take a look at the roots coming out of the hole from the bottom. They don't look too good, so I'm just going to cut that off because they're brown and crispy and super dried up. I'm just gonna pinch it just like that. The fact that it's growing out from the hole tells me that there is a bunch of roots already in the pot. So I'm not worried about this much being taken off. All right, so I've got two of these bamboo skewer stakes in here. I'm just gonna take off. Now I wish I had an extra moss pole laying around, but I don't, so. I'm probably gonna have this sitting 
somewhere in the plant room just trailing until it's time to start attaching it to the wall. Hopefully when I put everything or every one of these plants together in the same pot, it's going to look like a very bushy pot of Syngonium elbow because that is the main goal. I want a super bushy pot of this. Uh-oh, we've got a few red flags in here, guys. This should have been repotted a long time ago. Bad plant dad. Anyway, this looks brown. This looks mushy. This looks like mold. I'm gonna have to do quite a bit of trimming of the roots here. And then I think I want to like rinse it in some hydrogen peroxide a little bit because I do see some mold. What I wanna do here is try to get as much of the soil out as possible, but also detangling all of this so that I can cut off these roots that look mushy and these roots that look like they're exposed to this white mold, whatever this is. So I just wanna cut that off and then we will see what kind of roots we are left with. Okay, so I got most of the soil out and this is what's left of the root system. Now that I think about it, this white stuff might actually be diatomaceous earth that I put inside of the pot at one point or another. Either way, like the bottom of the root system didn't look really good at all. So I had to chop up, I don't know, a third of the root system off, but that'll give the other roots in here, a chance to push out even new, healthier roots. So here I've got a bucket, a dirty bucket of water, but to that, I'm gonna add some hydrogen peroxide. This is 3%. Um, it's probably gonna be a ratio of like one to four or something like that. So very, very light solution of hydrogen peroxide. But as you can see, it's already instantly fizzing up in there, right? Okay, while that soaks up for a bit, I'm gonna toss this and then we're gonna go ahead and make some more soil. This is definitely not enough to fill this pot. Am I right? To that mixture, I'm gonna be adding some more peat moss. But basically there's peat moss in here, coconut husk, which I'm gonna add more of in a bit, some pumice, charcoal, a little bit of mosquito bits, worm castings. And there's some leftover sphagnum moss in here from one of the pots. But I'm gonna add a little bit more charcoal and coconut husk. I think that should be good. 
So in my previous video, I talked about how I'm trying to eliminate the use of store-bought, um, like already mixed potting soil. But the last few times I bought potting soil mix, I found out that they came with pests. They came with fungus gnats, as is usually the case, but they also came with soil mites. Now, I've had success with eliminating fungus gnats in my plant collection, but I've had a really, really hard time getting rid of soil mites. In fact, some of my pots still have soil mites and they are very resilient to a lot of treatments. Actually, every single treatment that I've tried to use to eradicate them, they've still persisted. So I'm trying to instead like instead of buying potting soil mix to make to use as a base for my own soil mixture instead of potting soil mix i'm using peat moss so in this case i am using this organic peat moss from espoma i don't know if you can see there but if you've ever used peat moss before you would know that they can become very hydrophobic depending on how hard your tap water is I use tap water to water my plants and here the tap water is very hard so that in combination with the peat moss it really turns it hydrophobic so in order to combat that I'm adding a lot of chunkiness in here to kind of break up that so as you can see this mix here is looking very chunky I'm just gonna go ahead and pot it up here in this container put some in the bottom and I think that's enough time for this grandma plant to be sitting in the hydrogen peroxide. It's still fizzing in there. Okay, you see that? Now that it's wet, the color, you can see how bright orange that looks. Yeah, I think this is a good size pot for this root system because there is still some room here for the other cuttings, which now I'm gonna add the mother plant. Here she is. Actually, we can break this up a little bit more. Okay, that's better. So it's not just like one solid ball. So now it should be able to slide in there pretty easily. Okay, I'll just add a little bit more soil. Now, the baby. So this one is gonna be easy because it's just that. Okay, now I just wanna make sure that all of the roots in there are exposed to soil. So to do that, I'm just gonna bitch slap the heck out of this pot. Okay, so there we go. Before I call it quits, I'm gonna stake it up, but let me show you what it looks like so far. Ta-da! I know, it still looks like a mess, but Look at how bushy she looks. I love bush. There's still some leaves in here that are wanting to face in like different directions. But for now, what I want to do is I've got three stakes. I'm going to create like a simple trellis just to hold up the plant a little bit more until it's actually time to attach it to the wall. The mother plant and the cuttings are still wanting to grow upright and They've already got like a good amount of length to the vines. So if I don't put up these stakes, they're just gonna continue to droop. Okay, I think that's somewhat better. We still got all of these leaves that you can't see off camera. Like it's trailing on and on way over there. So there is a lot more that you can't see. But at the base here, it is pretty bushy if you ask me. I'm just gonna water her in. And then, yeah, I'm gonna have to tackle the other part of this project. 
attaching it to the wall in another video. So that's about it. Let me know what you think. Did I do a good job? I think I did. Um, everyone's pretty much settled in already. Um, I'm sure the water is gonna help settle the soil into the tiny cracks in between the roots. And then I'm gonna put it back onto the same spot. One of the things that I wanna do is move this giant Monstera Deliciosa because it did recently unfurl the leaf, the newest leaf right here. It's like this big and it's kind of facing in an awkward direction. Even though the light is like right there, it's just wanting to grow like right there. So I wanna move that downstairs to my living room because I wanna showcase that off because it is a very big, beautiful leaf. But yeah, anyway, my tummy is grumbling and I'm hungry. So I'm gonna water this, what is this now? Baby plus mother plus grandmother. Mama, baby, this new, this new Syngonium elbow. Let's just call her what she already is. Flawless, beautiful, bushy Syngonium elbow. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video guys, let me know by hitting the thumbs up. And if you haven't yet already, plant scribe. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.